Hey everyone, welcome back to the End of the Internet Podcast. My name is Gonzalo, and if you reached us, well congratulations, you've made your way to the end of the internet. On today's show, we're going to be discussing um, three film franchises that are near and dear to our hearts, but have somehow lost their way within the fan community and within our hearts. I feel like these three franchises are so important that they've peppered almost every science fiction film since they've come out and have spread throughout the fictional canon in odd ways. We're going to be talking about the Aliens, Predator, and Terminator franchises and see if we can find ways to either make them interesting or at least laugh at them a bunch. <laughs> we recorded this this past weekend and it was a lot of fun. We had a, a great time and this discussion is kind of why I wanted to do something like this. When I thought about creating a podcast, this is the type of conversation that I had dreamed of having. So it was just Marcus and myself kind of tossing ideas back and forth and having a great fucking time doing it so there's not much else to that uh it's just us talking about these these three film franchises thanks guys for listening we really appreciate it we'd love to hear what you guys think Uh, we come up with some weird silly dumb interesting ideas and if you guys have thoughts or pitches for these films please leave them below in the comments we'd love to hear from you so without further delay here's our discussion on aliens predators and terminators all right have a good one guys we'll talk to you soon Okay, so today we had decided on... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that is Perfect fucking time. hilarious. Okay, one second. And we're back. Um, sorry for the tiny hiccup, but uh, we have our third co-host. He's at peace now, and um, he has a very soothing look on his face. Today we were going to talk about a topic that we will actually save for another day and kind of started discussing something that we halted for. I had to update my fucking computer. So we're going to talk about the Predator, Terminator, and Alien franchises and why it seems to us that they can't make another great movie. Having watched uh, the newest the Predator by Shane Black and having sat through fucking Hi. Alien Covenant <laughs> Mason did not like Covenant um, and I just had a glancing understanding of what Terminator Genesis was about all of them seem to kind of be in the toilet and these are franchises that are near and dear to a lot of us and I, we both kind of don't know why they Hollywood the studios cannot seem to get this right like, yeah what is it about the, these franchises that a are dear to us and b why the fuck can't they do it right like what was the last good of these three franchises that you saw for me when it comes to terminator terminator 2 was the last good terminator movie which is ridiculously sad because there's been an abundance of them afterwards mm-hmm. i think there's been three since t2 <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? um for sure and then like even a Sarah Connor Car- Car- yeah. yeah aliens wise aliens <laughs> like i mean i you know, I, I enjoy watching Aliens three to a point yeah because it's not it's it's I don't know um, I didn't like what was the the one right after that where it's like Alien they, resur- uh, they resurrected <laughs> Ripley that uh. You're like what is that one where they resurrect what is it called yeah what's it what's that stupid movie called <laughs> Alien Resurrection that's dumb it's not called that mm-hmm. um, I, I I didn't really I mean I didn't hate it but it's just it's kind of boring and then the the kicker is the human alien hybrid, hybrid. thing yeah. at the end that shit's it's just really ridiculous weird. and um, and it makes sense with the lore but it's not something that i was super fond of <laughs> and then when it comes to uh predator um predator 2 i mean when we when we were discussing the idea of what to record next um we were just kind of spitballing ideas and one of the things that i said that i am start, starting to really like hold true is that I feel that the biggest problem with these movies, especially these, because to me they're the holy trinity of sci-fi movies for mm-hmm. for me at least. Yeah. Um, Never the I mean, late eighties. Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, of course there are multiple sci-fi movies that are awesome, and then they have their franchises. But for me, those are those are the ones, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you are going to make these movies in a modern time, the biggest problem is. You're trying to capture nostalgia, but no one wants to see that movie again. I mean, look at freaking what was the the Star Wars movie? Um, 
Force Awakens. Yeah, Force Awakens. I mean, it was kind of it was yeah. you know the it's first weird, Star Wars movie. There, and... there were two camps that were like, oh, it's just like the original Star Wars, and there the other camp that was like. This is just like original Star Wars. Exactly. <laughs> like, so you're trying to capture that, especially like with Predator, mm-hmm. with Terminator, with because they use the same uh, lines. Like almost yeah. everyone is is trying to capture all that stuff. Like, come with me if you want to live. You know, it's like yeah. I, we get it. And even in the new one, there's a scene where they like they're running for motorcycles and like get to the choppers. Oh my! <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Wow! I didn't need now. I don't. I don't need to see that movie. No, you um, do need to no, see that movie um, so that we can talk about it. Yeah, um, it's so it's it's that it's a double edged sword, or it's it's just it's a really shitty draw because you're trying to recapture something that we grew up with. Yeah. But no one wants to see it again, and then if you try to do something new, no one wants that either. Because yeah. it's like, well, that's not Predator, that's not mm-hmm. Terminator, that's not Aliens, and then you're mm-hmm. like, well, we'll give you exactly what you... It's like, well, I don't see that shit again. Yeah. Like, I've seen it already. If I wanted to watch fucking Aliens, I would have watched Aliens with yeah, you know, Sigourney yeah. Weaver, not this stupid shit. You know what I mean? Shit like that. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like there's just no win for those franchises, because... I think it's it's one of those ideas like me and you had a conversation a long time ago when they had kicked around the idea which I if I'm not mistaken has actually been greenlit where they are um, they're making like a Beetlejuice 2 movie and I think Kevin Smith said we were talking about it but Kevin Smith said it, he was like didn't we say everything we needed to say you know yeah, in, uh, the, first, in the first movie <laughs> must like be go tropical <laughs> yeah must be go tropical it's that it's that idea of like the the three aliens movies even though the third alien movie isn't very good but it's not horrible um the two terminator movies and the honestly the two predator movies you've said everything you needed to say you know it's like okay what do you do different with the predator oh you take him to the urban jungle holy shit million dollar idea now some people don't like that movie yeah but i still think it's a solid predator movie you know and somehow it feels like a predator movie without being in the jungle which is weird because a lot of people think they're like oh you gotta put him in the jungle you gotta do this you gotta do that and predator 2 just was one of the first franchises that i watched a sequel that was almost an anthology-esque take on the next one like i'm used to sequels being a direct sequel of the story but predator 2 was like oh it's just a new predator yeah it's a new situation and And that was fantastic yeah i uh, the same thing with the alien franchise it's like the first alien movie is a survival horror you know Mm -hmm. like it's a slasher movie movie. it's a slasher movie in space with an alien instead of a dude with a knife Mm -hmm. and then it's like okay well how do you how do you do the second one it's like you don't do a slasher movie you make it an action fucking military tanks you know yeah. like you make it a badass movie you know and i think the third one had been rewritten and they had to refilm it yeah so. the three was a big mess but i like that the three is such a weird kind of movie you know like david it almost directed works. It. and yeah yeah because it has some fresh ideas and i think a lot of those french all three of these franchises like every subsequent bad movie has like one or two things that are so close to being interesting yeah because but... if you really think about it like the idea of being crash landed on a planet where it's a prison mm-hmm. and they're prisoners and all that stuff mm-hmm. like there's some interesting ideas there you know yeah yeah and, and it's, it's when it's one alien again so it's weird that like i feel that a lot of times the studios or whatever are kind of like they're missing the site guys right they're missing they're, their fingers are on the pulse of the fandom like i think a lot of people wanted to see what would happen to hicks if they continued they wanted to see what would happen to newt once they got back, you know, from deep space or whatever. And they're just like, now oh, we'll just kill him. You know, yeah. we'll just start fresh, which is a bold idea, but nobody wanted that. Yeah, um, I kind of wanted to see Hicks again. Yeah, I yeah. I wanted to see, see Newt, you know. And even if it had been like, okay, Hicks lived, but Newt died. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or or how interesting would that movie have been? It's like, no, Hicks, Hicks died, Newt lived, Newt and Ripley are on this fucking planet you know that's full of prisoners and they're all hungry for women you know and so and then there's an alien and then you find out that oh the queen is in newt not ripley and ripley has to make a decision you know that makes it a much more interesting movie Mm -hmm. than the fucking weird jump off so like i feel like alien 3 feels like a comics side story to one of these franchises right yeah. it's like what if what if there's an alien in a prison you know? yeah <laughs> like a yeah. penal colony it, it's not the third in a sequel you know or a, a franchise and then the fourth one has a lot of weird randomness in it and it takes place so far in the future that all these other people are dust oh. and i like cole uh winona writer she's the android in that one 
and for a period it was like ABC, it was Ash, Bishop, Cole, and then David is in the uh, Prometheus. But there isn't enough there to keep it together. There's I mean, not. There, there's there's something. I feel like that one is is an is almost a an idea of the time because I feel like that team is trying to be very '90s comic book, you know, trench coats. And yeah, like, the dual weapons. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dual I think weapons. It was and... A French director. Um, um, but it, like like you had said that those movies were of a time, and a lot of the sequels are trying to recapture that time somehow, and they can't. And I think a great example of like what would an 80s action movie look like today like with modern sensibilities skyscraper um, well no actually, <laughs> but the rock i was thinking is um the rundown like when mm-hmm. the rundown came out that was like an early aughts version of what a 90s or 80s action movie would look like but modernized right I agree. like it doesn't feel like they're trying to make an 80s action film it feels like they made a modern action film that was a spiritual successor to those right even so much that arnold's at the beginning and you know he says good luck to the rock at the beginning. Yeah. But that somehow they got it right cuz they were using like modern storytelling techniques and modern dialogue and stuff. They mm-hmm. just like updated it. And if you could do that with these three franchises, I don't see how you could go wrong. I feel like maybe another reason why these movies fail is because one of the big things is you have to hit these things. It's like, no, just tell a story. Like, mm-hmm. tell an interesting story. And it sucks because I think... But if you go the... too far off and you get Alien vs. Predator Requiem. And oh, you're like, God. what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, that's... Yeah, ooh. I can't believe you brought that up. No. AVP Requiem feels like it was supposed to be something else. And, like, the studio's like, oh, we have these IPs lying around. Just put Alien and Predator on it. Like, I, yeah, you know I mean? that's... Ugh, that's sad that that makes so much sense. Because when I first... When I first heard of the idea of Alien vs. Predator, um, is it Requiem, the one where they go into the Aztec? The, no, that's the, the first That's AVP. the first one. That's AVP, just AVP right? Yeah. I thought that was an awesome concept. It's like, oh, we're following two rookie Predator, you know, yeah. into basically a, a, a Predator-made... Um, rite of passage. Rite whatever. of passage. Like, and it just happens to be on Earth. Like, that's freaking cool. And then it was like, oh, no, we're following the humans. It's like, damn it, stop doing that. It's just, I don't know. But, so... I don't really know what... I think everybody has an idea in their head of what makes a good alien predator terminator movie but it's hard to narrow that down it's hard to vocalize it's hard to put your finger on it exactly like what exactly do you need and you know of... you know what you do hmm. I, 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 and we'll of course we're going to cover this on another uh, podcast where we're going to try to fix these franchises but you know what you do you go so fucking far off of it give me more lore for a predator movie make a fucking predator movie that literally just revolves around predators not on earth and do something like that like show me their home world show me their tech show me their culture show me their tribe mm-hmm. or don't or loosely show me those don't make that the focal of the movie mm-hmm. maybe fucking have it to where it's like oh well not only like if you think about the predators what's one of the coolest things about them that they're hunters how much more like tribal slash almost macho could that be it's like a fucking hunter you know and they're hunting mm-hmm. for game and sport they're not hunting for food mm-hmm. they're hunting because they that's that's the, their whole tribe mentality, their their culture. What else could you bounce off of that? You know? Oh, fucking... Maybe they enslave other predators or the ones that, like, get banished or they're just shitheads and they put them in a coliseum. Make me a gladiator predator movie <laughs> and I'll fucking watch the shit out of that. Yeah. But I but I don't think people go that route because they're always wanting to retread like, the same shit. Yeah, I, I think I can't remember his name is Movie Bob. Uh, he had talked about like he had made a video call like stop trying to force me to like the Predator. And his the whole kind of thesis was that the Predator is one of those assholes with like all of the hunting gear that's standing over like a dead rhino or something. There's like total fucking douchebags. But, oh like, yeah, on their home planet they're like. You know, a loser, Bob. That you know, like they have truck goes, nuts on there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because they're big game hunters. But I, I would like the idea of that they're not big game hunters. It'd be cool if they were like fighting for survival. You mm-hmm. know, like they hunt down these things and they have trophies because they honor their dead. But there's only a handful of them left. There is no predator world. There's like a handful of tribes scattered across. Uh, the according universe. to Aliens versus Predator, there's the whole. World. No, no, yeah, that, yeah, for sure. And I mean, like, why don't we know that they're called Yauchas? But we know that Xenomorph is what the name of the alien is you know and like we know that the exoskeleton that arnold was was a t-800 how come nobody knows what a yaucha is i used to have you know? a calculator called yeah. a t-800 <laughs> <laughs> so 
So it'd be cool if you could, you could broaden the lore and it doesn't have to be so... Like, you could still stay with it and change it without shitting on it. You but know? I think another another thing that fails with that is... And it's it's the, the fatal flaw with every movie franchise ever is kind of like in the gaming world. Oh, we got to dumb this down for the casual. Like, for me and you, for people who love Predator, for people who love Aliens and Terminator... We want to dive deeper for the movie companies. They're making it so casual that they're trying to like, well, we don't want to go too in-depth. We're just going to throw a, gr a group of, you know, well-named actors in this movie with a predator. And we're going to recapture lines from the old movies and we're going to sell. And it's going to suck, what but we're going to sell tickets. And what I recognize too it. is like, because so, <laughs> Uh, Alan Silvestri's score for Predator, right? That, da, 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 that music, it's oh, so it, fucking ooh, got, good, got right? chills. It's so good. You gave me chills already. But that music, they use a version of that in the new Predator movie. And it's like, that movie is not the old movie. So when you hear that music, it does kind of evoke like, um, oh yeah, the music, you know? Yeah. But it doesn't fit for the scene or the characters or the situation. So you've ruined this movie for the sake of nostalgia. You know, yeah. you've ruined it for a shout out in a week, you know, towards the audience. And it's not worth it. What the fuck is that, you know? And there were a handful of bits like that in Rogue One, the Star Wars Rogue One, that I didn't like that it was just like, you know, someone would walk into a room and everyone's supposed to go, oh, it's that guy from those movies, you know? And Best voice just, you've ever done. <laughs> it just does not work. So if you're going to make a good Predator movie, it'd be cool to have the opening theme at the beginning or the end, but it, like have some new blood in it, have yeah. a new score, a new, you know, some new ideas while taking the foundation and the groundwork that's already there. Because... It's so rich. It's so fertile. These franchises have endured for years and years and years. They're not going to stop making Terminator movies, Predator movies, or Alien movies for as long as you and I are alive. Yeah, and for sure. Probably long into Mason's life, too. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think we're ever going to see a good one. I really don't. I don't think... I think so. I, no, I would not going to happen. I'll bet money. <laughs> okay, I, I don't think there'll ever be another good Terminator movie. I think there'll be a pretty good Alien movie, and I think there'll be another really great predator the problem with terminator is that because it's been around since the 80s people nerds like us the fucking diehards which i'm not a diehard but people who love to talk about it have dissected that story so much that it almost doesn't make sense like for the time when we didn't know a whole lot about like well, i mean we still don't know about time travel because it doesn't actually exist but yeah. People have dissected the idea of time travel so much that m more movie rules and I guess just rules in general have been in place to where it makes more sense. It becomes more of a real thing. In the 80s, it was just like, oh, that's cool. He came back in time to kill yeah. Sarah Connor, you know. <laughs> He's it's naked because they can't send clothes. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's okay. like, oh, leaving tissue over exoskeleton. You know, it's like. What? What? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. But as we get smarter as a people. <laughs> Yeah, Mason, you get them. Tell them. Terminator sucks. You don't want that. Um, <laughs> as as we get more into... You know, <laughs> what? Right, what do you want Mason, to talk about? if you had to remake a Terminator movie, what would you do? Don't interrupt him. That was rude. That was a rude question. All right, no. go ahead. The... Oh, I thought he was going to keep talking. <laughs> um, he just had to start banging his head on Marcus's chest. <laughs> so... The thing, the thing about that, I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Mason. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, uh, so what I'm trying to say is, as we get more, you know, educated, as we understand more, as more great creators come out with even more awesome ideas on the sci-fi genre, it it becomes a harder pill to swallow. You know, the idea of Terminator. You know, so I think you're right about that. There is not going to be another really great Terminator movie unless you just make a Terminator movie set in after judgment day like mm -hmm. show me the war you know show me the continuation stop mm -hmm. sending robots back into time because you either have to reboot it or yeah like you said go to a different time period like a big but wasn't that like, last terminator movie like a soft reboot or something because it's like sarah something connor's like young and I don't, I don't know i didn't i didn't want to watch yeah, it i'm not yeah, gonna watch right. it, it even for like the sake like of the podcast mm -hmm. it looks horrible yeah john connor was a fucking terminator like what yeah. you know it looks terrible and he's old terrible. you know um, but it's it's that you know with Predator there there I think we maybe one day we'll see a good Predator movie. I think so. But I, I think, think they, they have to get their heads out of it. I, Shane Black, you know, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, fantastic movie. Uh, I haven't seen too much else, but I just think not so much as a one hit wonder when it comes to Predator. I just think that there's a lot of try hard. They try mm -hmm. too hard to recapture stuff that you're not going to be able to recapture again. Yeah. I think you need extreme fresh blood. 
people who are completely far away removed from the Predator movie scene and it's like, do you like Predator? Yeah. It's like, well, give pitch me an idea and let them pitch it and it's like, okay, that sounds really interesting and might make for a fantastic movie. A lot of action and, you know, you don't always have to... Just because Predator was awesome with a bunch of muscle-bound badasses doesn't mean you ever have to recapture that again. Yeah, it never has to be that again. Like, Predator 2, there's ne'er a glistening bicep in sight. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, it's fucking... That, it's a bunch of like cops, you know. Yeah. Nobody is cut. And, like nobody. They're just a bunch of sweaty cops in a lot. It's Murtaugh. Murtaugh against the. Yeah, it's, <laughs> do you see how high his pants are raised? <laughs> Here with me. <laughs> God. Um, but like, I think the, the the all three of those universes have so much room to tell stories. Just somewhere else you know like where else is there a xenomorph infestation you know like what else is happening on lv426 it doesn't have to be this story you yeah. know and the same with like the war with john connor like how many stories have been told about someone trying to you know get to or be a part of some great person or whatever yeah um so how can like john connor just not be a mythical hero or someone to aspire to or whatever you know yeah. like and what happens when people kind of come into contact with the fallout of a terminator attack or something you know do we mm -hmm. have to reference these old characters and then predator i think predator is the easiest one to figure out because so. they just you just constantly drop a new one in you know yeah and i think a lot of people are trying to build off of the one series and instead of i don't know i guess not treating it kind of like it's like one continuous story instead of a franchise does mm -hmm. that kind of make sense you know like they're trying to tell one story yeah like, because like the skywalkers throughout star wars it's like what else is going on in the universe besides the skywalker story yeah you know but see then you well because no, comics and games have been doing that forever right yeah. like like colonial marines or fucking i don't know concrete jungle any number of these like side stories and like extended universe expanded universe stuff have always been like oh this is so and so gcpd yeah like, yeah freaking exactly, Gotham, exactly. like that was a fantastic idea it's like a day in the life of a gotham city police detective like how awesome okay how, how badass would it be to watch jim harper's team go into the jungle right so in the lore of predator carl weathers dylan his men get ambushed and they disappear so then they send a group of green berets into the jungle to find them and they run into the predator and get skinned alive right yeah. And that's what leads to Dutch having to come in, yeah. right? So why not tell Jim Harper's story? Like, you could see him. He was a Green Beret at a Fort Bragg, right? Yeah. What the hell were they doing there? They were there to get Dylan's men. Why were Dylan's men there? And, like, how good is this Jim Harper? You just show how badass he is yeah, all the way up until he they run skinned. into the Predator. Yeah. And they get skinned alive, and there's your movie. You know, like, yeah. who wouldn't want to see that? Because it's in the same time zone. It's in the same universe as time frame. But you can kind of expand. What were they See, doing? There? And the funny part about that, you could literally do what Star Wars did and retell Predator, but with this new group of guys. And except Dutch living at the end, Jim dies. You know, at the end. Yeah, and exactly. It's still an exciting. It could literally be Predator again, but instead of Dutch living, yeah, like yeah, you said, one Jim by dies. one they're getting picked off as a dude of badass glistening bicep dudes. You know, yeah, yeah. Bautista could be in it. You know, like oh yes, oh that's <laughs> perfect. Yes. Batista has to be in it. Um, you know, you get you get some badasses in there. You have some good action scenes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you do some cool shit with the... And, it, and the funny part about it, you could, you could literally make it to seem like it was... Like, half the movie could be this fucking, like, guerrilla warfare shit, you mm -hmm. know, with a predator hunting in the background or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then... Yeah, what, once they start getting picked apart one by one, and then mm -hmm. Jim is at the very end, and he goes out like a fucking G... Mm -hmm. you know predator's not done you know it's like that leads into you know could you imagine check this out could you imagine like the end of the movie you know jim faces the predator obviously nowhere near as badass as dutch you know maybe maybe just a sneaky but the predator gets him mm -hmm. you know kills him fucking gets his skull it's or whatever skins them does all this shit and it's over and you think it's over and it's like the music of da, 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 you know the <laughs> credits roll and at the end you just see the fucking helicopters with that music dude like okay, that's it so and that's, then that's, perfect, that's perfect right so like jim doesn't get his skeleton pulled out because he wasn't that worthy an opponent right so all of jim's men are just skinned and they're hanging yeah right? it's like a shame so thing yeah they're just like oh fuck these guys they weren't worth it you know but they will bring in the ones that are but that's perfect like 
at the end of it, it's like nighttime or something, and the bodies are just swinging, and there's like a fire blowing or whatever, and then you're like, the sun is coming up, and you kill the helicopters, and yeah. the predators like looks up, and that's it. And it just oh ends. My, oh, that would, would be I would fantastic. Kill to see that movie. So that would be fantastic. That right there, there's an idea that seems like. And you get a bunch of money behind it, and a bunch of smarter people than us to write it and direct it, and you tell it. There's, there's the beats right there. Right? The basic structure of that movie is that. Yeah. How is that not interesting? How does that not get made over what we got from Predators and the Predator and the AVP movies? Yeah, you know, how, sure. how does that happen? And I think the the Alien franchise is really weird because we've had the man that kind of started it all do the last two, and they're not good. Like. But I think I'd say not Prometheus good. is uh, Prometheus to me feels like a movie that should have been its own science fiction film. Yeah, like it life. shouldn't have been. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't have been an alien movie. It should yeah. have just been like, oh, Ridley Scott made a science fiction film, you know? Yeah. Um, and then Covenant, I couldn't even get through. But the funny part about it is that's what I feel it is. I feel like they were making a sci-fi movie, and then some exec went, <gasps> make it a prequel. Yeah, but now like, now oh. it has to be a prequel. Yeah, now, now it, it has is. to. Yeah. So now you're like. Well, this movie doesn't work, you know, because it doesn't work as an alien movie. It doesn't work as an explanation as to why the xenomorphs exist, and these characters don't make sense. There's that scene where they're running and the things like about to. Oh, and them the and... meme. Yes, yeah. just that doesn't work. And then Alien Covenant is just terrible. Yeah. And I don't know. There's like that movie really gets away from them. I don't know what they were thinking, and it's hard to believe that Ridley Scott did that movie because it's so awful. It it goes back to the 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 greatest line in a movie and I don't know if it was said before then and I don't care if it was said before then but it's the if you'd either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain mm -hmm. like someone like Ridley Scott Shane Black all these guys that had these ties to these movies you kind of just pass the torch and move on you know 10 20 15 whatever years later don't try to do it again because it's the same tricks don't work it's kind of like you know as you get to to hear and know me guys uh you'll realize that i'm a big football guy it's the same thing it's like the old plays from the fucking 70s aren't going to always work right. you know because you become more advanced you you understand the fucking play call so you have to get crazier in your play call you have to trick people you have to show them something else and i think that's the big key here those guys have a name and they made their name on these franchises and that's fantastic and I will forever love those guys for that. But when we're talking about a modern, updated, new, fresh blood kind of story, I don't think you need to get those guys. You know, everyone's always like, oh, Shane Black's on this one. And I kind of, even when people were saying that, saying that to me, I was just kind of like, uh, I, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I get what it means to you. It makes, it, it brings you hope. Yeah. But in the end, I'm like, ah. Uh, what's he done you know since mm -hmm. anything it's like he has a couple of like niche titles and you know under his belt that's cool but that's not predator yeah you know yeah and for someone who didn't really care for iron man 3 you might not be as excited you yeah know? exactly <laughs> like i thought iron man 3 was fucking oh well, iron man 3 was okay iron man 2 was fucking god awful yeah. but iron man 3 is okay it's, it's an mm -hmm. all right story but there's nothing in his take on Iron Man 3 that made me go, fucking Predator, he's gonna <laughs> ride it again. Like, there was, like, yeah. okay, like, cool, good good job, guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I think that's one of the biggest problems, is that <laughs> stop, you know, get some fresh blood, some new blood, and take a chance. I mean, you've already buried these names in the fucking mud, you know? How much worse can it get? Give now, somebody a, a fucking shot. I wonder what's gonna happen, because I think, like, are all three of these Fox properties? Are they? And didn't Fox just get bought out by Marvel? Disney? Or Disney? Yeah, sorry, not Marvel. So I wonder if that's going to oh, be... Oh, that is true, because I remember someone said that the Queen Alien, the Queen is a fucking Disney princess <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> That'd be weird to see, like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy 4, you know, there's like... Some there's the Marvel in the background. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wonder if that's going to be a thing. I doubt it, but when that all gets square, maybe that's another reason why we might not get another great movie from any of these franchises because they now belong to the mouse and i wonder do they have a, like a rated shelled. r yeah yeah they, they have a rated r agenda you know because we'll lose deadpool for sure and getting something like logan is almost impossible under disney you know and i, I don't know it's kind of i don't know if you feel this way but logan feels like those old franchises like it yeah. has something about it and it's a fox movie yeah <laughs> so i wonder like if it's like the jungle or you know the wilderness or something but somehow like you get the right filmmakers to tell the story that 
they are interested and excited to tell and then let them fucking tell it you know yeah because I, that's exactly how I feel about Logan like Logan feels familiar and completely new like mm-hmm. it's it's a fantastic breath of fresh air and it's like that's all you have to do give me something new but just stay in the lanes it's kind of like again you know when you watch like Batman Begins of the Dark Knight you have told a fantastic Batman story but you also did a lot of new stuff because you made it more real mm-hmm. like it's one thing to watch Michael Keaton in his fucking Batmobile and this suit and no explanation to all those things. No explanation whatsoever. You just know he has a Batmobile, he has a suit. He's Batman, fucking Batman. <laughs> you know? But Nolan's films are like, well, this is how Batman came to be. You know what I mean? And I and I love that. So it, it, it goes into that kind of storytelling. Like, just stay in the lanes, but give me something new. Give me something different. Give me something that makes me go, oh, like this is familiar, but fucking so new. I want something with some thought behind it. You know, not just a cash grab, not just a wink and a nod to the audience, but someone who wants to tell a fucking story in those worlds, you know? Yeah. And if not, then leave them the fuck alone. <laughs> and then it, it sucks because even with that, like, so you want to tell a story. That sounds great, but what makes your story any good i remember i remember i got super excited finding out that i don't even know the dude's name and i'm not gonna look it up but the guy who was gonna direct uh, gi joe 2 he was like a big fucking gi joe sweaty it's all you oh, i love gi joe i grew up i read the comics and i was like oh that's cool you know this dude's like, prime and then, <laughs> you know well he and yeah he was all like i want to tell a story about between snake eyes and storm shadow i mean he was literally checking off all my boxes like dude gi joe 2 might be fucking awesome you know, because G.I. Joe 1 was garbage. And G.I. Joe 2 sucked too. But I also heard there was a lot of studio interference. And then Channing, Channing Tatum didn't want to be in it anymore. Mm-hmm. And, like, they kind of forced the rock down his this throat. So, I don't know. But it's still one of those things where it's like, even with all that said, you probably still could have told the story you wanted. And if you're going to kill off Duke, yeah, you're going to have to throw the rock in there. You can still... You could have still fucking um, told your Snake Eye Storm Shadow story, you know? Like, yeah. But it sucked, you know? So it's one of those things where it's like, well, I have a story to tell. It's like, yeah, but is it one we all want to hear, you know? Mm-hmm. That's the that's the thing. That's I, I, I'm over the Terminator. And then I heard something today, actually. I like to listen to a lot of, like, podcasts and YouTube videos while I'm working. And uh, Ralph the Movie Maker, he said something that... I've heard before, but the way he said it really hit home and made me think about these titles. He was talking about Michael Myers, like the remake, and he was like, it wasn't that great, and you know, there's a lot of problems with this and that, and he was like, the problem with Michael Myers is that we've seen him a million times. There is no fear anymore. We know what he is, yeah. you know? And he said he was like, he's going after Jamie Lee Curtis in her, he makes his joke in, in her uh, Home Alone 2 house, you know, like it's her and a little kid defending themselves against Michael Myers. Like, how scary mm-hmm. is that? An old lady and a girl. Yeah. Or defending against this thing that's supposed to be this horrific force, and you know, it's like at you just lose, you lose all that, you lose the fear, you lose the scary, and there's a lot of truth behind that. I remember growing up, Michael Myers, just the image of him scared me. Yeah. And now you see him, and it's like, oh, it's Michael Myers. He's a fucking Halloween costume. You know, I've seen him a million times. I've seen him in jokes and stories. So you're saying and- that's like. I think that's a I think that's a big connector. Like the Terminator started to lose everybody when they were like when you set the bar with a T one thousand. I think there was only the only way to go was down. Yeah. Because it doesn't make it's like oh well we made a Terminator T one thousand. It's like how is that much more advanced than a T one thousand? Yeah. It's yeah. not. That's a <laughs> yeah, downgrade. That was you know. Metal. <laughs> if you would have shown me a fucking like if the T one thousand was. In the Terminator 2 movie, a Terminator with liquid form, you know, mm-hmm. that could do that, but was still a Terminator. And then Terminator 3 was a liquid T-1000. Then that shows, okay, yeah. that's advancement. That's holy shit. That's technology. Like, the fucking Skynet got really good at their, you know, Terminator making. But it doesn't work. So Terminator loses a lot of its luster because after a while, it's, oh, it's just Arnold Schwarzenegger with sunglasses. And then the, his the face problem, is going to get cut off. And, the problem with the Terminator movies for me is that each subsequent movie like the stakes from the last one are lessened right because like oh so judgment day still happened like and, after, and after one thing. and yeah. two and three we still had judgment day you know? yeah it, it doesn't <laughs> like, matter and the it, stakes and, are low and someone always you know some douchebag is always like well that's just it you can't run from destiny or you can't change you know the course of mm-hmm. destiny and this and that it's like it's a boring movie then it's, it's just not yeah then what are we fighting for exactly you know? it's like people think that and and i love like 
parallel reality stories. I love things like Rick and Morty and Crisis on Infinite Earths and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But the more you open it up to that, the less anything matters. It's like, oh, well, you know, we'll try again. <laughs> yeah. Some other reality. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, I like, like banished it. Oh, shit. So, I mean, that's like the biggest problem. with it. And then the other thing is like you have this super advanced machine and in some versions of it, it's like this, like it can do these really phenomenal things, but it always seems to just move really slow and it's like this is the yeah. ultimate killing machine like it's so cumbersome it yeah. feels it's almost it's like three shades higher three grades higher than a robocop you know what i mean yeah. it's like yeah it's a little yeah like what 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 got skynet from where they start to the t800 model that they were like that's good that'll wipe out the humans you yeah know, like that's all they need yeah and how did it get so Kind of, I think, like, yeah, like, the encroachment of advanced science fiction has made those franchises dumb. <laughs> it, <laughs> because it's, like, exactly. they keep trying to, like, smart up the fucking technology. And it's like, no, at, in 87 or whatever those movies came out, and then 92. Like, the Skynet was like, no, we just need walking metal exoskeletons. Those are fleshy, little, dough, cow eyed gross meat sacks. Yeah. Walk into them. <laughs> like, yeah. that's all, they're not going to be able to stop us. Yeah. And then Hunter Killers, you know, like, those big things. There's nobody inside manning it. They're just it's a tank. It's an yeah. automated tank. You know, yeah. it's like a drone. How, and then, how and do we get away from thing. that? Like, like you, you look at Terminator Salvation, and they kind of expand that. Like you're you're in the world now, so you have all these. Like there's like a giant mech. You know, like mm-hmm. a fucking robot. That's a huge thing that actually like takes prisoners and shit. Mm-hmm. And to and, what end? Like what would? But but my well, I don't even remember what the end what the end game of that was. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fucking thing is. But the bottom line is. Someone sat there and was like, okay, well, if this is the most advanced technology ever, they would continue to advance instead of just having these fucking T-1000s. Yeah, because like a lot of scientists are like, there's no computer that is a, that we could make that would be as advanced and sophisticated as the first computer a computer would make. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I feel like somebody, when they were making that movie and they started to go like, let's make some fucking badass shit, and they did, but then in a weird way, it's like... Why do we have T-1000s again? Like, if we're making all these really cool... Like, there's one... Or why fucking... don't we have nothing but T-1000s? Yeah, it's just, it's just like, weird. Why we... And why do... Like, if they're this advanced machine, like, why don't T-1000s run us faster than a vehicle? You know what I mean? Like, that would scare the shit out of me. Or maybe, like, a T-1000 is such advanced technology for the 1990s, but, like, in the future where, like, Judgment Day has already happened and, John, like, John Connor has already, like... I know how to deal with a T-1000. You do these two things. We have T-1000, like, anti-T-1000 mines. Right. So that's why they had to make them obsolete. Because, like, in 1992, liquid metal is the shit. But, like, in 2087 or something, they're like, there's a T-1000. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, I have one of those like, in my basement. Yeah, they just, like, light it on fire. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, the in Salvation, one of the things that takes away from the Terminator is that they have these other advanced machines that look kind of cool but then you're like well i'm not watching a terminator movie anymore i'm watching a fucking this is just this is like another version of the matrix you know with all these okay. machines yeah, yeah you know and i think that's the big problem because that's, then that's the story you know but that's, that's what i'm like, saying like, then what it's, sucks is that the matrix told a better machines versus man story than the terminator can ever do yeah and so now it has to live in a place where it'll never be one and two and it can never be the Matrix. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, what was it in one of the movies where it was like, one Terminator could kill, you know, a hundred people. And it's like, I, I get it because it can take a lot of damage. But mm-hmm. is, that its, is that its biggest trait? It just can take a lot of damage? Because yeah. there's nothing in those movies that shows that this machine is like, you know, can it, can it crawl on walls? Can it move faster than a fucking cheetah? Like, mm-hmm. no, it just takes a lot of damage, which is still kind of cool. But, and oh, like, you have a thousand of them. It's like, yeah, I get it. But, What's man. crazy to think, like, what, what else is that? future like like have you seen the road no i want no? to okay though. I heard so the road takes depressing. place in this fucked up post-apocalypse right what if that's the world but in the world of the terminators so because it's like i think in the lore like skynet gets a hold of the nuclear codes right yes and they launch nukes and they decimate the human race and there's like pockets of survivors yeah so this is all true why what what i wonder how what the percentage is of humans to i guess machines on the planet and when skynet crunch the numbers and go we'll just get rid of them all or if they're like something that they suffer the way we deal with like cockroaches it's like yeah. well you're not going to get them all but they're cockroaches yeah. you know like it's like 
these T-800s and T-1000s are like this fucked up rogue version of Skynet or just like some really petty part of Skynet that's like, no, we gotta crush the humans forever. And proper Skynet is like, well, you can, but we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, they're on to other things. Like, like this is the dark side of the movie. Like, Ter- like Terminators are just a firewall. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Go. It's like, you know, like, a, like Japanese soldiers, like, on islands in, like, 20 years after the end of World War II. There's, like, a pocket. There's, like, one continent where this conflict is raging, but the rest of the world has advanced because Skynet has taken right. over. Skynet's and, parts are all, like, perfect yeah, robotic yeah. utopias while Terminators are just a fucking like people love. <laughs> interstellar travel and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, Holy there's shit. Just, like, this little, like, you know, backwater hick war that's going on that just takes place on, like, the eastern seaboard of what was America. <laughs> Skynet's been sending messages to humans, like, I think we can coexist now. Terminators like, no, yeah, we yeah, can't. The, yeah, the Terminators are like, <laughs> Skynet's fine, but the Terminators... <laughs> <laughs> Terminator's just like fuck those guys, right? Yeah, that, that's an interesting. Terminator's story. a racist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like somehow they picked up some fucked up trait, and then like like Skynet had to like after seven updates, it's like oh that's version one of Skynet, you know? Like, yeah, those it still had Terminators. Like, yeah, they still have Terminators. And those are those are T one thousands that breed. We, we are so far beyond that now. Yeah, you know, that conflict is so behind. We're so much bigger, so much more powerful. Yeah. Like, like right, so, just, so, okay, so there's two takes. One for Ter- Terminator, one for Predator. Now we just got to do Aliens. <laughs> and see, and that, that we're bringing back what I was saying about the Michael Myers thing, and how, uh, I feel the same way about Xenomorphs. What is there about a Xenomorph that's scary on a screen? But I don't think that Xenomorphs are supposed to be scary. I think, like, with Alien, that was a horror movie. But after that, like, now they're just an action franchise. They're science fiction adventure yeah. you know they're, they're, i don't think that they ever need to be scary and their design is inherently scary you don't see their eyes so it like dehumanizes them and they're constantly drooling yeah you know and they have two mouths like we're good I, <laughs> like, I it's pretty like, scary and then this is just my short-sightedness i feel like in order to make a great aliens movie you need to go back to aliens what they did like when i think of alien and aliens like if you were to go, what would you want to see in an Aliens movie? Just give me a fuck another military fucking space marine, you know, but make the make the stakes bigger. You the way know I, I mean? look at it is like Aliens to me as a franchise is kind of like zombies. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, That's what, exactly you, what I mean. You come up with a good survivor story where there are aliens, yeah. you know, and then you tell a good story that way. I feel like Starship Troopers is the last good Aliens movie <laughs> I'm going to fucking watch and- like that's that's what I want. I just want fucking hundreds of fucking insects and badass. I always imagine that uh, Starship Troopers is what Robocop dreams of when he's asleep. Like, oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? That's awesome. <laughs> I also feel like the Starship Troopers like outfits were from like someone. I don't know what came first. I can't remember anymore. But it's like, did Halo steal their shit or did? Starship Troopers oh, the yeah. Halo shit yeah, because they look a pulled, lot like yeah, fucking Halo, Halo Troopers. There's, there's like dialogue in Halo that kind of reminiscent of well, Starship they, Troopers. Right? Well, they 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 straight up said um, old school Bungie and when they were making Halo that they fucking not stole. They actually didn't not stole. They fucking took a lot of inspiration from Aliens. They're like, oh yeah, yeah this yeah. is fucking. You can feel it. You know, they're like the two biggest ones were Aliens and Predators because the Elite are kind of like the Predators and fucking the. Space Marines are they're, they're the Space Marines from Alien. Aliens, you know. and that's why it spoke to a whole fucking generation of us because we could feel it in the DNA. You know? Yeah, like, hoorah! Like, you yeah, know, shit yeah, like that. Yeah, All those little the things, you know. But yeah. So, anyways, going back to Aliens, to me, the only way I mean, the only way you can tell a good Alien story, I feel you have to have a couple beats. One, a lot of gunfire because these things are fucking badass. Like, I, I'm kind of done with the, the chasing, fucking hunting, mm-hmm. like, oh my god, like, we don't have any way to fight it, so we just have to run. Like, I playing a lot of Alien Isolation, it's fucking great. It's a great game, it's a great idea, but I kind of done with that. Like, I want to go back to the, you know, guns blazing, bullets, you mm-hmm. know, but that bleakness, you know, it's like, oh, we're not gonna survive this. We're just fighting to buy us time until we figure out either how to get the fuck out of here or just or, save as many people as possible. Or to save as many people as possible, or just continue fighting until we can't fight anymore. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I think it was, like, two nights ago, I was reading um, Wildcats Aliens crossover, mm-hmm. and how, like, that hive of Xenomorphs gets into Skywatch and just fucking decimates Stormwatch. Like, yeah. And the Wildcats almost died, too. Like, they have acid for blood. Yeah. And they're, like, almost like apex predators, you know? They're, that's all you need. You need, like, a group of survivors, and, like, there should be a lot of, I feel like, violence and stuff but seeing the spray 
of acid is always great because that threat is always there. It's like even in defeat, these things are fucking us up. Exactly, know? and that's what I want to see because you take you take a, a colony of aliens, right? And you you can't just shoot them willy nilly because yeah, they have acid for blood. So you have to be really, very careful. And I mean, you can have a whole squadron get fucking deuced out because of the of the burn. You know, mm-hmm. it's like oh shit, that's scary. That's scary to me. That gives me anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's like I can't go in there with a shotgun. You know, <laughs> yeah. so you need to back up. So you're constantly running backwards, firing at these things, and oh yeah, they can crawl on walls. They're extremely smart. They're very strategic. Yeah. You know, they, they have like a hive mind. They yeah. have a hive mind. You know, I I love that shit. So mm-hmm. why don't we just constantly go back to that? You know, I mean not constantly, um, but since we're in need for a good aliens movie, I'm done with this prequel stuff. I didn't need to know how a xenomorph was made. Yeah, I don't need to see how that works. Yeah. I need to see good xenomorphs in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And like the game Colonial Marines was supposed to be all that, but that fucking gearbox fucked that up horribly. Yeah. Um yeah, it was it's ridiculous. That story is ridiculous. Like But anyways, um they basically took money from Fox. Because Fox was like, make a Colonial Marines game. And they're like, that's cool. And we will. And they took the money Fox gave them and put it into Borderlands. And they fucked Aliens Colonial Marine. Oh, really? Yeah. And they were like, what are you talking I about? I thought that was the story. That that's we made a good game. What you talk about? It's great. Um, but anyways, like, so why don't you take what they were going to do with Colonial Marines and make that into the movie? Like, that's all you need to do. You know, fucking Space Marines are going back. Mm-hmm. to find out what the fuck happened it's like mm-hmm. oh you're retreading the same shit it's like yes but it's a different story because it's kind of like predator yeah. that team got wiped out well they're not just fucking the military of people of interest are just not gonna let that go yeah yeah they're it's going like, they're to send gonna, someone yeah lb 426 is not gonna be written off yeah you know? <laughs> i mean especially if they, there's some kind of money to make well they nuked it at the end of aliens but there's bound to be Any, some, some other kind of assets, yeah, yeah. you know. Or yeah, exactly. It's like okay, we okay, a bomb went off and nuked. Yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But what if there's some asset there that's like, and this is like we the, need to recover that. This is the future, right? So maybe they found a way to detonate like a nuclear device without any fallout. So basically, they just have to wait a day, you know, and it's like, okay, now we can go in and search. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because it's not going to be like. Oh, now it's all irradiated for 400 years or whatever. Yeah. No, 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 no. We we have clean bombs. <laughs> yeah, and then and then the other thing about that too, you could you could literally say that you know the the interest of the company. I want to know what the fuck happened. There's a black box down there. Mm-hmm. Go give me that goddamn black box. I want to know what happened. Or there's files there that we need. There's data there that we need. Mm-hmm. Like just because this thing happened, it's kind of like a refinery explosion. Like okay. Mm-hmm. But we still need to make money. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm sure that Bishop was connected with, like, Wi-Fi or something. You know, like, they probably could run his scans. They don't know what Wi-Fi is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they, I mean, yeah, at the time. But if I think about, like, if we're, like, modernizing... Yeah, no, you know, for real. For that's, real. That's just something that they didn't mention in the movies. But we have to think that there's some base that's reading all of Bishop's readouts, right? They'd just be able to read into him and go, like, oh, okay, this is what he found. This is what he saw. These are the things that he was sending back in his documentation. So the have data they know what's wrong it's like oh we stopped getting contact at this point that's when we found out that they crashed on some fucking dirt planet or maybe like bishop was the cause for that like okay we just need to get them off the board because we need things that this information needs to stay here we'll send them then ripley even says the ascent of space like put on a piano quality wipe it she won't be able to figure it out Mm -hmm. you know so off they go and if we're lucky there'll be a an alien inside of whatever yeah yeah but uh, Waylon Yutani, I think is his name. That yeah, yeah. Name. That they're they're like they have to be hacked into their androids. You know, they're artificial people. And yeah, some kind of information being sent back and forth or whatever. But yeah, I mean, and that... when, when when have you ever seen like one house get fumigated for bugs, and then every house on the block is free of bugs? Like, so if LV four twenty six is full of fucking aliens and it, then it gets nuked there's got to be other outposts on that planet you know what would be interesting like... i might have come up with an idea for a movie for aliens what? so the whole fucking thing because i actually get kind of sick and tired of this like the Wayland corporation being <laughs> almost like an evil entity like umbrella and they want to weaponize the the xenomorphs and shit like that it'd be Which interesting is the dumbest shit it's like fucking jurassic world it's like you know, it's like a tank with sharp teeth. It's like, I don't want a T-Rex. I'll take a tank. You yeah, know, like... I would rather tank. The, the thing that I can control? Exactly. Like, yeah. But it would be interesting if, let's say, that information came out. Maybe they were like, okay, send these dudes down there. We need to wipe that information because it's still there. But they don't get to it in time. Let's say somehow, some way, the information of the xenomorphs gets out to the public fucking people. Mm-hmm. 
and governments and everyone like Waylon fucking stocks just Plum. drop, you know, and fucking Waylon goes out of business. Like they just they're fucked. So Waylon's out of it. Mm-hmm. So now you have a new corporation or even a government saying we're not going to let this fucking thing go. We're going to wipe it out. Yeah. Like we're going to just exterminate this thing because it yeah, is some, a massive some rival threat. corporation that was just like waiting for a while and you trying to go out of business and like just fucking gobbled up the assets yeah. and then had all the access to like the information. Like okay, we're gonna go take care. Yeah, of so we're gonna you know we're actually the good, the corporation is the good guys. Like mm-hmm. we're gonna go in there, but that's just it. You're still sending a group of people or. Ma- you can have like, oh, we're going to send 10 humans and 20 androids, but it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, even we're if fucking... We're sending please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's how that movie gets sold. Oh, no, no. We're sending um, T-24,000s. Like, oh, my God. Because, like, Skynet has merged with this, like, <laughs> they are the ones that go in. Wow. There you go. Fox owned. I mean, uh, Disney owned. There you go. Um, but, yeah, you have it to where this good company doesn't want to fucking save xenomorphs they want to wipe them out so they send them down there and again and like i love i love the idea of like you know the xenomorphs being a virus it's they just spread so even with the good intentions of wiping them out they can't wipe them out they pull the last remaining survivors back what'd you see like fucking hell and shit treat this man and they just so happens to have a face buster fucking okay. on him okay is this too much and i think it is i think it's fucking dumb but it just came to my head so a face hugger like implants an embryo right for uh xenomorph if you're gonna say in a droid i will fucking that's what i'm saying face. no so how does that work a cybernetic <laughs> fucking xenomorph dude they have that's a, too much <laughs> they had a predator xenomorph i'm not saying that that's a good idea I'm just saying, is that a where, like, can you go there? Is that even worth expecting? <laughs> you know what? I, I would, I feel like you're, I feel like you're on the fucking ledge between brilliance and madness. Right. <laughs> because my thing is, you're either going to have the next great idea, like, holy shit, this is a cybernetic mm-hmm. xenomorph, or you're going to have Jason X. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, like, right, it's right there. Yeah. It's right on the <laughs> Um, in the right hand, you might have a great idea. But... What'd be cool though is, like you said, that something that I guess I don't know the the major lore, but like the Colonial Marines are a part of like the United States Space Air Force or Space Force or whatever. So if nobody knew, USMC. Of... Is that... no, it's Halo. Oh, okay, <laughs> I was like, oh shit. If nobody knew about the Xenomorphs except for this company, and they put Marines in harm's way, so that will bring about like the decimation of this corporation, right? Yeah. But now news is out, right? So the I guess united federation now knows about <clears throat> xenomorphs so then that it causes drama because there will be a subsect of people who are like no we got to save them that maybe they're endangered you know Ooh. and then like there Ooh. are other people that are like Bro. no we gotta go in and destroy them and blah blah i got you <laughs> that everything you just said yes and you merge the idea that's basically how do i say this you make 28 days later xenomorphs aliens <laughs> it's, it's on earth you brought them here. You thought you were going to save them because it's a species, one of God's creatures. <laughs> and you fucking annihilate the world. And it's like, hello? But instead of, ah, it's yeah. fucking xenomorphs. <laughs> and you're done. That's how you make that movie. Dude, and it becomes so a survival horror. Mm-hmm. With a, maybe you have a special squadron like in between scenes while mm-hmm. this where we're following one character trying just to survive 20 days yeah, later. Yeah, you could style. almost literally just do it 28 days later where it's like, okay this continent is kind of fucked right but how can xenomorphs jump continents they yeah. won't be able to so we'll let them they can swim. burn it depends on what you know what I mean? they can they but yeah yeah, yeah yeah i don't but, know how long like, but yeah like i don't think they, can. they start impregnating dolphins <laughs> <laughs> tuna i'm saying like any like any biological entity that the well, is on it'll come yeah, out yeah that's the way the both. toys were it's like yeah. a gorilla alien well, no, that, that's alien. More, like, i know the, i know that's what i'm saying so nuts to think about actually yeah that would that would work Holy shit. That could work, yeah. Um, and that, that, like, is it like, I think you're right. There should be more action in an alien movie, and it should be more, not horror, but survival. You know, See, that's a, that's this is how you fix the whole thing. Okay, so you start with aliens, all right. right? So you have, like you said, corporation goes down, the federation comes in, you have one sec trying to save them, the other saying we have to wipe them out. Somehow they either bring a xenomorph or they get infected with it. They bring it to the fucking world, they bring it to the to, to Earth, and in a span of a few days, it just starts fucking spreading like a virus. So that movie follows one character who was, you know, literally 20 days later, knocked out in a hospital or something, follows him surviving the story. That's your first 
movie. It's your survival horror. Right. The second movie is the military getting involved, and you get your just like in Aliens, you get your fucking military <laughs> force. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do, and I mean that's fine because apparently you can't fucking do it yourself, Hollywood. So I'll do it for you. Yeah, seriously. Um, but but it, again, what's changed? What makes it more fresh and interesting? Well, it's on Earth now. Yeah, it's not just in Earth. space. In space, no one can hear you scream. That's that was fucking fantastic. We're done with space. They're here now. Like the threat is real, and I want to see that imagery. I want to see fucking London. And burning. I want to see New York falling apart. You know, I want to see the end of the world, but it was xenomorphs and it was still technically our fault, but it wasn't some evil corporation. It was just, we were trying to do something. You, know? you, do, the, you do Doom, right? You do Barons of Hell. It's like, this is the friend, this is the series that we introduced King Aliens. Yeah, like, exactly. Alien oh, King. shit, yes. <laughs> so you have them on Earth. You know, your second movie is your fucking military thing, but there's still no happy ending. <laughs> but you in that movie, with a fucking beam of light shooting from the sky and you're like what the fuck was that and like an explosion in the background or something and the fucking like the the big pan of you know like this explosion or a crater or whatever the fuck and it's a giant spacecraft and the fucking doors open and there's like the light and shit and a fucking tribe of predators come and it's like we're going to help you Mm -hmm. destroy these fucking aliens we're the exterminators, you know? <laughs> right, yeah, like, like that's... And then so you get the game. So the, remember the, the fucking arcade? The you, get, yeah. you get the game that we always wanted in a movie. You get humans fighting alongside predators against armies of the fucking aliens. xenomorphs. Yeah, and they're all different because they've all, like, gestated in different oh creatures and stuff. Big it bear like, fucking xenomorphs. Maybe not so much Terminator, but it definitely feels like these franchises were somehow, like, entwined, right? They're, they're always going to be connected to one another so why not lean into that too you know yeah. especially in a world like it's a marvel driven and spectacle and shared universes and stuff yeah there's no reason why not exactly that. you know if you're gonna make if you're gonna waste your time doing fucking alien covenant you know and like the predator do this <laughs> yeah exactly well then you could even and i'm not i might be reaching and i may be fucking reaching but you could even set up somehow like, okay, well, why is there a, a government federation? Why are all these things united? Why why does it not seem like maybe there's a separate... We're all just under one umbrella now. Why did that happen? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe after the Skynet debacle, humans finally do reclaim the I'm world. Saying. And this is all happening after like 100 years after Skynet. And then you come to find out that Skynet... I don't, I don't know. Again, this is a reach. But maybe Skynet fucking knew that there were xenomorphs somehow. Maybe they were able to infiltrate information from Wayland fucking corporation. Yeah. All this shit. And they were like, we need to wipe you fuckers out. Yeah. You maybe, human, maybe because you're the only ones that will fuck this up. Like we were talking about kind of like Skynet moving forward and the, the end of the world and all that. Like, no, we're going to move on to other things. Maybe like there was nobody running Wayland yutani Maybe like it's it, just was, it was just Skynet. Yeah, oh and they God. just had Terminators acting in their stuff. They're all They're droids. Just, yeah, as their droids and shit. And eventually found out about him and was like, yo, the bad news bears, guys, like, let's not do that. And when they come back, somehow, like, the xenomorphs are the ones, like, with Ask for Blood and all that, they just could not compute. They just cannot get their heads around how to stop this problem. And that's how Skynet falls, is to some, like, ancient thing, you know, this ancient, I guess, hive. Mm -hmm. And then humans have to make the stand, and then you could even say that, like, predators are interstellar exterminators. You know, they go around and they're like, what we do is kind of like... So, like, Galactus will go around and he'll eat planets, and those planets hold the seed of a celestial, right? So he keeps the celestial population in check. That's what the Predators are. And we can erase this last movie (laughs) and its stupid fucking lore and say that, no, the Predators kind of, they're interstellar exterminators, and they go around because these hives are known to spread and explode and they decimate. And it's kind of their charge or whatever. And it's like, why did they do it? You know, that's another movie. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, maybe it's, you know, old tribal rituals. Maybe it's just, they're just uh, natural. Maybe they uh, just know, they, they've they seen their civilization fall as xenomorphs and they know that they have to stay on their game. Yeah, That's yeah. why they that's, hunt That's why I think it, it's, and... it's interesting that there should be no predator planet. There should be no predator home world. I think it should just be a bunch of starships in outer space that are just a bunch of tribes, you know? Mm-hmm. And they'll find places to sit down and, like, live and exist and set up their, like, That'd okay, so so the, most of this world is where me and my tribe live, but the other half is where we practice. Yeah, Which you and can that's technically can continue that like weird like oh, there's tribes of predators and they fight each other. Mm-hmm. Like, you could yeah, because they'll run into each other, yeah. you know. But that they're they've been scattered. I'm the best and, yeah, more killer. Like, that they're even kind of like sands, you know, like that they lost their home planet. That yes, no, <laughs> that I, somehow I agree like with the you. xenomorphs like decimated their home world, so they have a 
like a blood vendetta. You know, they're just so out to get these fucking things wherever they see them. They're gonna fucking kill them. And that's why they have the bombs on their fucking things because when they get overrun, like, beep, beep, yeah. Beep, so we'll take them all out so this won't happen again. Right? Yeah. Because we already lost one home world. We'll never go home again. Yeah. And so they just constantly like tribe out and de- I would watch that. I would watch that. Shit out of that. <laughs> Holy fuck! That'd be awesome. I think we just right. fixed those movies. We I think we did. Yeah, yeah. We don't even have to. <laughs> we can, we, we'll t- later on probably go through franchise by franchise and kind of like like we'll sharp we'll polish this. Yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll but I think up. just kind of spitballing and brainstorming, we came up with a way to make the best out of these three failing franchises with not that much work, which would take a little bit of, I guess, effort and money, but and a little bit of like rebooting. You know, I think so. Yeah, but I don't think why why not. I think you, know, you make, why not make I think work. you make more interesting movies. And maybe and you know what? In all honesty, we if I think you keep the Predator Alien thing the way we just kind of spit it out. Mm-hmm. I think that's perfect. I think you can actually X nay the Terminator thing. You can't there's actually, something I like about like I, there is something I like about it. Like I kinda like the about idea like of like a warehouse like... of T one thousands that they had built to fight xenomorphs, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I kinda feel like I think we should let Aliens and Predator finally get the movie they deserve. That would be cool. And you leave Terminator out, but you give RoboCop Terminator the movie they fucking deserve. Okay, that's something. That's that an idea. Happen. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so no Terminator in the Alien. Predator Alien. Yeah, you give a proper. But you put RoboCop in the Terminator brand. Oh, I'm... you have to. You have to. Like oh. that. Delta uh, City Blues. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll watch that movie. Yeah, you, you seriously, you you have to do that. I mean, those those franchises, they all deserve it because I mean. Mm-hmm. The, the remake of RoboCop, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great. Like, it was just like, eh. You know, it, it makes you long for RoboCop, the original, yeah. you know? I, I, I like where their head was at. And in all honesty, I feel like some of the things that they did would be things I would come up with. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's the delivery, the the way they did it, and, like, the acting and some of the st- stuff is what really held that movie back. Yeah. But the remake, it had some ideas. And I... The only thing that I wouldn't I have done... I have to watch it. it. It was okay. Um, the only thing I wouldn't... And it, of course, it was like a PG... Yeah, PG-13. 13. So, you know, you can't make a RoboCop movie like that. But the one thing that I really thought was a very 90s remake of it was that they made them like stealth black with the, with the red. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, keep the color. Keep Robo... Because they yeah, had yeah, it for yeah. a while, like mm-hmm. in the beginning, like this first coat of paint. Okay. And then he gets like a stealth black. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I feel like that's something I would have did... When I was growing up, like when yeah, I was like, like 15, 12. you know, <laughs> looking like, I'm going to be black and he's fucking like still, he looks awesome and he looks like Cyclops with the red visor and like, no, let's just stop. Like, mm-hmm. just keep him the normal color and we'll be all right. And then the one hand is a human hand that looks so stupid. I know, that was ridiculous. That, it, it that's really the one thing, off. it completely breaks my immersion in that movie. It's just yeah. like, wasn't he like, he used that hand to shield himself? Why would they save his hand? Like, even what's his name? Uh... God, I can't remember the name of the character, but when they're like, oh, we were able to save the left arm, and he's like, hey, total body prosthesis, lose the arm. Yeah. Like, get rid of it. All body parts, except yeah. for that. death. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Terminator Robocop is a conversation for another day, but I, very, very true. I would like to know what you guys think. Uh, if you want, leave us comments uh, in the comment section. Let us know what you thought, if you thought our idea was kind of horse piss this is something we just kind of came up with. like i said we both had notes of some other topic that we were going to discuss and which we'll, we will we will have for yeah it'll time. be another podcast um and we'll mention it when it happens but this one just just kind of came up you know um i was thinking about the predator the newest one is now on dvd and it's i don't know it, these are franchises that have affected both of us and we love them to pieces but it's diminishing returns and why the fuck is that and so we just kind of started talking about it. i was like well maybe let's just start recording <laughs> I, I i honestly feel that those three franchises in my head have just turned into jokes mm-hmm. like they're not they're not good like if i hear like there's gonna be another terminator i hear there's gonna be another predator if i hear there's gonna be another aliens my first thing is like, okay, well, I'm not going to watch it. I don't even right. need to see anything. I just I, need to I hear just, like, sick a... fascination, like, how fucking bad is this going to be until yeah. the trailer comes out and I see it. Okay, not like Yeah. But, okay, if you could have a great one, which one would you save? Ooh, but only one like of only The other two would, would just go down in flames. They'll never get one that's even as good as, like, I don't know, like, House of the Dead. Like, they'll never be any better than that. But one franchise you can save, which would it be? Well, I'm not going to lie. Terminator's out. 
I don't give a fuck about Terminator. I got, I got, I got what I needed out of Terminator. Um, I think all I need is Terminator One. I don't even need two. I just see, need one. I just one need is, one and two. I'm just good. like one. Um, I just feel like two is a more polished, more mainstream friendly, but just a more polished yeah. story. And uh, so Terminator is out for me. I'm done with it. Um, I feel like I could forego Predator only because Predator is. So the first movie is such a fantastic movie. I don't ever need another Predator movie. But I kind of feel the same way about Aliens. Aliens with the S, mm-hmm. the second one. Um, I guess if there was one movie that I could bring to absolute glory, it would probably be... Uh, Robocop. <laughs> um, Batman. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know, because... I feel like I got everything I needed from the first Predator and the second Aliens. Like, I really don't know. Like, they could... It's one of those things where... I guess maybe you could say Terminator because it's like... If I want to go down the Predator Predator path, I just put on the first movie. That's yeah. all I need. When I want to watch Xenomorphs, <laughs> I watch Aliens. Terminator, <coughs> the first one, the only problem I have with it is it gets so 80s that sometimes I just can't get into it. Uh-huh. Um just because it's so dated um even though i love that movie don't don't get me wrong but that was like 84 I think yeah it's the oldest of the three. no 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 I think it was because like it still had like stop action terminator movement yeah. and stuff but um and then like terminator 2 is again it's a more polished you know second the sequel and it's a yeah. good movie but at the same time it's also very you know family friendly in a way it's like yeah it's it you know it's not the same gory violence or anything like that so i i, I guess by default terminator because really? there isn't like again, Terminator One's great. Terminator Two is great, but to bring it back to greatness, it'd probably be the hardest one. Terminator. Think so. Yeah, because again, I just need Dutch mm-hmm. and I need Ripley. That's all I need. I don't give a fuck about John Connor anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking done with Judgment Day and John Connor. Yeah, so yeah, I, you know what? Yeah, I guess it'd be Terminator because I would. I don't even know how you do it. <laughs> right. So like, it's like, how do you make that interesting? I want to see that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you almost, you almost, almost sold me on. I, I, that's a really good argument. I, I would personally, I would take Aliens just because I think, like you said, Predator One and Two is that's all I need. I don't need to see more. I don't want to expand on the world really of the outros and all that shit, you know. And Terminators, I just don't particularly find that interesting yeah. anymore. As a kid, it blew my mind. As yeah. an adult, eh, I'm good. But I would love to see more Xenomorph movies. Yeah. I don't care what. Just make them good. They're so interesting. Like, there's a big... You know, when zombies had their big resurgence and it was all fucking crazy when people would shut the fuck up about them. But 28 Days Later and uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake and stuff, like, that was really good zombie. And then Shaw of the Dead came out and you're like, wow, those are really good zombie movies, you know? That's yeah. what I would love to see really good alien movies. Just make them good. The last two have been so boring. I yeah. cannot, even if they're think pieces, I think they're so smart. They're just fucking mind-numbing. So I would love to see the Aliens franchise put back on top. Mm-hmm. But, would you like to take us out? Yeah, absolutely. So again, like Gonzalo said, um, if you have any comments, uh, if you want to, you know, give us your thoughts on what we were talking about, these reboot franchise ideas or anything like that, hit us up. Our email, endoftheinternetpod at gmail.com. Uh, shoot us some messages on Twitter, even comments, anything, uh, E-O-T-I underscore podcast. And then, of course, we have the End of the Internet uh, Facebook page. Um, but again, you know, shoot us some shoot us some love. Uh, we'd love to hear your take. That'd be pretty badass. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to hear what, maybe like a, like a, the elevator pitch for your Alien Predator Terminator movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, seriously. I would love to see that in the comments below. But for the End of the Internet, my name is Gonzalo. I'm Marcus. And you've reached the end of the internet, and this is the end of the episode. Have a good night, guys. Peace.